For Kruma Media's policy, I'm Sanel Damini, City of Cape Town Mayor Jordan Hill Louis joins me to discuss development in his city as the taxi violence strike comes to an end. The recent strike has caused chaos uh, in the city of Cape Town and also resulted in a few deaths. You refused to give in to what you refer to as an impossible Santaco demands. How was the strike brought to an end? And do you fear that similar problems uh, may happen again in future? Of course, I do fear that, but we have succeeded in building in certain safety mechanisms, which will make it harder to strike uh, so suddenly in future. We should never, ever have a repetition of the scenes we saw last week, Thursday, when thousands of people had to walk home along along the highways because the strike was called with immediate effect in the middle of the day with no prior warning, uh, a real affront to human dignity. And uh, so we have built in a mechanism whereby there will be at least 36 hours notice of, of strike and uh, that there will be an escalation mechanism whereby if the taxi task team reaches deadlock, then it will be escalated to the Premier and I. So uh, then, of course, there is the violence uh, clause as well, that violence may never, ever be used as a tool of bargaining. And if the the agreement uh, is contingent on there being no further violence, so that if there is any violence in the future, the agreement is null and void. So hopefully those clauses together mitigate against or rather militate against uh, future strikes uh, and and that it works. But of course, there is always a risk that given the scale of the disagreements and the seriousness of the disagreements that uh, that we that they are, uh, it does recur. And you recently said that uh, the city has been simply acting on uh, what is called the National Land uh, Transport Act that the Minister of Transport mm. Uh, Cindy Siwe Chikunga should be defending. How do you think matters could be resolved uh, with the national minister? Well, I think the, the, the minister should be much more strongly on the side of commuters and passengers on our roads. South Africa has some of the most unsafe roads with the highest number of road deaths anywhere in the world. And in fact, the data shows that taxis are overwhelmingly involved in those uh, in those road deaths every year, not just in Cape Town, but around the whole country. So if there is a mechanism in law which allows us to take stricter enforcement action to protect customers, protect road users, then the minister, I think, the minister of transport for the whole of South Africa, not the minister of taxis, not the minister of taxi drivers or taxi owners, she should be defending her legislation, which empowers that tough action to uh, to protect road users. It's surprising that she has not. I'm sure the city of Cape Town now is working on recovering its reputation with the international tourists after we've seen that the US, uh, Canada and UK uh, issued security alerts uh, for travelers to the city. Uh, very damaging. Uh, you know, so much of Cape Town's economy depends on, on tourism. Uh, 350,000 people in the city work in tourism and hospitality. So when several thousand tourists cancel their trips, that is a devastating cost to the lives of those employees and all of the other jobs that could be created in a growing tourism industry. So it will take us some time to recover from that, but we will recover and we will get back to on on uh, on growing terms. And what would be your message uh, to those who have been affected by the recent chaos in the city? I I would say uh, the strike has been most unfortunate. I hope they will agree that it was the right thing to do to stand up and say no to violence, no to criminality as a bargaining tool, that that should never be an acceptable tactic in any South African government negotiation. And so we had to draw a line and that uh, the violence and the cost of that violence should be directed at those who perpetrated it, the uh, the taxi associations themselves. And so I, ordinary residents and commuters can also help us by making it clear to taxi drivers every day that we do not accept uh, lawless driving, reckless driving, driving and, and behavior on the roads that endangers the lives of people 
many of them children, because we have a huge scholar transport uh, 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 part of our public transport sector, many of them children, that it is not acceptable, that that kind of road behavior is not acceptable. Now, on a more positive note, Mayor, the city of Cape Town has broken uh, its all-time uh, infrastructure spending record. Uh, you've spent a yes. 0.94 billion rand on infrastructure in the 2022-2023 financial year, exceeding the mega projects uh, before the 2010 World Cup. Tell us about the city's infrastructure plans. Yes, thank you. Uh, the The city has plans uh, since since my election at the end of 2021. We have worked on plans to accelerate infrastructure spending very dramatically. Because we have to prepare for the future success of our city, there are a very large number of people moving here all the time and uh, a very large number of people uh, that are living in neighborhoods that were not designed for that number. So density is growing and putting all of our uh, infrastructure under huge pressure. So we're investing big time, mainly in water and sanitation, because sanitation, sewage infrastructure, is so important for the dignity of residents, uh, particularly those living in townships and informal, uh, informal areas. We really want to improve sanitation infrastructure uh, and this is all about preparing for Cape Town's future success. So, so we've just broken this record, but we're just getting started. We this year will be more than ten billion rand. Uh, so, another uh, you know significant, significant jump, nearly a fifty percent jump from this year to next year. Uh, so, it's it's exciting stuff. And in your recent speech, you emphasize that a building capacity in your administration, particularly in project mm -hmm. management, yielded these results. Tell us more about that. Yes, I mean the 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 thing about infrastructure is that it's not it's not good enough to simply budget for it. You've got to have the capacity to actually deliver big projects, and that means engineers, it means project managers, and uh, you know expert technicians. And we did not have sufficient capacity to deliver the scale of infrastructure uh, ramp up and acceleration that we wanted to achieve. So the first thing that we did was actually to scale up our human resources in, in, in specialist engineering, in specialist project management skills, and other specialist uh, infrastructure skills so that we can actually deliver on those projects so that they're not delayed for years and years and run uh, you know, heavily over budget. Mm, another exciting initiative, Mayor, you recently announced that the city is in the process of rolling out uh, residential plans for Michelle's Plain and Kailicha. How many households are going to benefit from this groundbreaking initiative? Okay, so so yes, this is very exciting. This is one of the most exciting pieces of, of regulatory work that the city is busy with. Uh, and it has the potential to unlock tens of thousands of new affordable houses in our city uh, because it allows private capital to be attracted to these projects and it allows for those projects to be legal and to connect to the city's grid legally and not to be seen as some kind of planning of uh, offense which is how they are uh, all too often seen so the idea is simply this concept of micro developers that people who own a home can build three or four units at the back of their home and rent those out uh, that is already happening across the the city, but it's happening too slowly because uh, you cannot get planning permission for it and you cannot attract any private bank finance for it. So it has to be entirely self-funded. Uh, and so what we are doing is, is working on a regulatory reform, a, a very big regulatory reform, to make it legally possible to get planning permission to actually help. We are rolling out assistance, planning officers to help uh, do those plans and do those submissions for you. Then you can get bank finance uh, and private uh, finance for those projects. And so you can scale up much, much quicker. So potentially we could go from, you know, maybe a few hundred of these units a year to, to many thousands of these new units a year. And that really, I think, will deliver much more affordable accommodation for Cape Town. And from what we've seen in Gauteng, where with that blast that happened uh, in the main city centre, is Cape Town making sure that uh, nothing of su of such happens while you are preparing for these big infrastructure projects? Well, part of this huge infrastructure acceleration is caring 
and upgrading our existing infrastructure. It's not all new. It is mm. often upgrades. Uh, and, and you've got to care for what you have and make sure that it is well looked after. And clearly, the Bree Street explosion in Johannesburg is, is an example of infrastructure which has been allowed to fall into disrepair. And that is the terrible consequence. So, yes, I hope, you know, touch, touch wood, we have no such uh, disasters here. But hopefully our investment program is making sure that that never happens. And lastly, uh, Mr. Mayor, the city has also been praised uh, for hosting Africa's first ever a Netball World Cup. What is your assessment uh, of the impact of this event? This is not a, a, a an enormous uh, event. It's not, it's not as big as some of the other World Cups, but it is still a rapidly going, growing sport, uh, a sport much loved by, by uh, schoolgirls across the country and professional athletes. So it was great to be able to host it. It was a wonderful event. Uh, and and we really do hope to see the sport go from strength to strength in our communities. That was City of Cape Town Mayor Jordan Hill Louis in conversation with Polity discussing the latest development in his city as the violent sex strike comes to an end.